sentire media. Welcome to the Stop Italian Selling Podcast, uncovering authentic Italian food. I'm your host, Robert Campana, and join me as we delve into the rich heritage of genuine Italian food, exploring its legends, history, and traditions. Through important tips and insightful interviews with industry professionals, you'll gain a deeper understanding of authentic Italian food. Welcome back, everyone, to the Stop Italian Sounding Show, uncovering authentic Italian food. So, imagine an eating regimen that is high in fruits and vegetables, grains such as pasta, rice, and bread, plenty of fish, and good fats like extra virgin olive oil. You probably guessed that I'm referring to the Mediterranean diet. Yes, it is considered one of the healthiest diets out there. Now, I'm not saying that there aren't any healthy or sustainable ways of eating that exist around the world, because there probably are. But for today, I just want to give my thoughts about the Mediterranean diet. First of all, as you know, I'm not a medical professional, so if you make dietary changes, you should probably seek medical advice. Anyway, back to the Mediterranean diet. I want to start with the word diet because I think it's really a misused word. Diet actually comes from the Greek word dieta, which loosely translates to lifestyle. And that's just what the Mediterranean diet is. It's a lifestyle. In fact, the term Mediterranean diet was coined by Ansel Keys in the 1960s. Ansel Keys was an American nutritionist who conducted the quote unquote seven country study, which examined the relationship between diet and cardiovascular disease in different countries, including those around the Mediterranean region. And Keyes observed that people in these Mediterranean countries, such as Greece and Italy, for example, had lower rates of heart disease compared to populations in Northern Europe and the United States. He identified their dietary pattern as being notably different and healthier, thus polarizing the term Mediterranean diet to describe this way of eating. Now, does that mean that all people in Italy or Greece, for example, actually follow the Mediterranean diet 100%? Of course, the answer is no, they don't. In fact, based on the statistics that I was able to find, only about 5 to 13% of Italians follow the Mediterranean diet. So what is it exactly? Well, the Mediterranean diet is a dietary pattern inspired, of course, by the traditional eating habits of countries bordering the Mediterranean Sea, such as Greece, Italy, Spain, and Southern France, just to name a few. And it's characterized by an emphasis on plant-based foods, whole grains, healthy fats, and lean proteins. As you've probably seen before, its layout is a food pyramid, where the bottom of the pyramid is more important than the top of the pyramid. So what exactly is the bottom of the Mediterranean pyramid? Well, as I said before, diet comes from the Greek word dieta, meaning lifestyle. So at the bottom of the Mediterranean diet pyramid, there are seven habits that are deemed to be important for the success of the Mediterranean diet. I'd like to take a minute and just discuss these seven habits. The first we have is conviviality, which helps to, let's just say, consolidate bonds of friendship and fraternity, if you will, between individuals. The next one we have is tradition, which is a depository of cultural heritage that has evolved over the many centuries and which is an infinite, let's just say, repertoire of taste. The third element is seasonality because consuming seasonal products means reducing environmental pollution and, of course, at the same time, eating tastier food with fewer preservatives. Next is sports because outdoor activities and movement have a huge positive impact on our health, as we would probably all agree. And finally, the last three are simple but very effective concepts. We have togetherness, which is an invitation to cook together, women and men, adults and children, all together because it's believed that the Mediterranean diet must be preserved and renewed day by day in gestures and actions performed in the kitchen with other people. And for this reason, another concept is crucial, the concept of education and bring into schools the culture, value, and history of the Mediterranean diet. Because food education, in fact, shouldn't be a list of restrictive rules, but a reflection on the value that food has and will always have in the history of humanity. And finally, the last concept we have is zero waste, which is, of course, a moral duty to avoid food waste. So anyway, these seven elements are fundamental for the success of the Mediterranean diet. Now, let's start with the food. There's a high consumption of fruits and vegetables, which are central to the Mediterranean diet, providing essential vitamins, minerals, and fiber. And moving up, we have uh, things like whole grains. 
things like barley, oats, whole wheat, rice, pasta, and bread, which are preferred because they give a good source of fiber and give us energy as well. Next, we have healthy fats such as extra virgin olive oil, which is a primary source of fat in this diet used for cooking and of course, dressing salads or fresh vegetables. And also we have things like nuts and seeds, which also do provide healthy fats. Uh, moving closer to the top of the pyramid, we have lean proteins like fish and poultry, which are consumed regularly with seafood being an absolute staple to this diet. And next we have a moderate intake of dairy products like cheese, for example. After which we have red meats, which are consumed in much smaller quantities compared to fish and white meats. And finally, at the top of the Mediterranean diet, we have, if you will, sweets and sugary beverages, which are consumed very sparingly. Oh, and how can I forget a modest glass of wine? Of course, if you're of the legal age to consume. So anyway, as we wrap up today's episode, this was just a very quick outline of the Mediterranean diet or lifestyle, I should say. So why did I even decide to talk about all of this? Well, first and foremost, because the teachings of the Mediterranean diet are very wise in my opinion, and it promotes heart health, weight management, reduced risk of chronic disease, and is quite enjoyable and sustainable as it includes a variety of flavors, textures, and food choices that could accommodate even different cultural preferences and personal tastes. So of course, I'm not here to try and say that the Mediterranean nation strictly follow this regimen. As I mentioned earlier in this episode, most people do not, even in the Mediterranean. However, that doesn't mean that the Mediterranean diet isn't valid. Like I said before, its teachings are quite wise. And in my opinion, these habits should be taught not only in places like the United States, but also, to be fair, also in Italy. Now, I'm not saying that Italy has similar dietary habits as the United States, because we all know that they're quite different. What I am saying, however, is that despite some Mediterranean dietary habits that most Italians do have, they also have a lot of room to improve as well. Thank you for joining me on this journey through the stories of authentic Italian cuisine. If you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to subscribe to this podcast for more insights and interviews. Also, feel free to reach out with your thoughts or questions on our social media channels at Stop Italian Sounding or on our website, stopitasounding.com. Grazie a tutti e alla prossima. Sentire Media. Hey, podcast producers and show hosts. Do you want to join a podcast network that celebrates all things Italian? At Sentire Media, we understand the allure of Italy and its unique culture. Our devoted team of hosts and producers are all driven by their shared passion for Italy. And we work tirelessly to create the best lifestyle podcasts and content that will whisk you away to the very heart of Italy. With us, you can savor the mouth-watering flavors, get lost in the stories from the past, break down the cultural barriers, and truly immerse yourself in the vibrant traditions of this intoxicating country. If you have a great podcast idea or are already in production and would like to join Sentire Media, head over to sentiremedia.com that's S-E-N-T-I-R-E media.com and find out how to submit your show.